The most optimistic views of the future paint a picture of spaceships riding warp bubbles as easily as expert surfers catch waves off the beaches of Earth. But even optimistic physicists must face some harsh realities. If surfing is an analogy for how a warp ship might work, then watching a beginning surfer drives home a better point. Achieving warp drive is very difficult. This morning, uh, I had my, my first surfing lesson and had this idea that in some sense, we were gonna be able to uh, uh, manipulate in some sense nature and that I was gonna be able to uh, ride this, uh, this, this wave and it was gonna carry me at, at great velocities across the ocean. But the reality is that the ocean manipulated me. It was far harder uh, to control than I originally uh, anticipated. And control is a real problem, because science says a warp ship just can't make its own warp field. One of the often cited problems with uh, the warp drive model is the ship would be what we call causally disconnected from the bubble. That is, it could never find a way to communicate with the bubble, and so could never turn the bubble off once it had started. But what would happen if the starship did not have to worry about turning its bubble on and off? What you might imagine for a sufficiently advanced civilization and given sufficient new laws of physics would be some kind of warp drive escalator or corridor. And then when you would drop a ship into the prearranged warp tube, if you will, it might be able to ride some wave along to the end. It would be like a bullet train to the stars. Its passenger cars might travel faster than light. But whoever invents it would need thousands of years at sublight speeds to build it and use more energy than we can imagine. You would probably need to harness at least the energy output of an entire star, if not a lot more than that. So these are things we can talk about hypothetically, but no one has an engineering program to make it happen. When astronomers recently discovered that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, they reasoned it was driven by a mysterious dark energy that is part of space everywhere. A few people have suggested that dark energy can be harnessed as a power source for exotic devices like starships or time machines. We don't really know what the dark energy is, so it's not clear that we will never be able to harness it. However, the leading models suggest that it's either a property of space itself that can't be changed, or some sort of an energy field which is of such low density, there's so little of it per unit volume, that harnessing interesting amounts of it will essentially be impossible. The bottom line when it comes to warp drives, wormholes, or time machines leads many scientists to reject them out of hand. Can we be sure that they're right? Though we think we know a lot about the universe right now, and we do, there have been many times in the history of physics when we've been burned by having too much of a self-assured sense of knowing it all. There really are laws of physics that we can't violate. But there's also technology. You say, well, this is just too hard. We'll never be able to do it. And there, when scientists say things like that, they're almost always wrong. It's much safer for us to say, here are what the laws of physics allow us to imagine doing. Hopefully, someday in the future, we'll build the technology that makes it happen. And as we've seen, that future may confront us very soon, as astronomers search for planets around stars outside the solar system. The closest star system to Earth has a binary pair of stars. Is that a good place to search for planets? That's just what Nicole of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, wanted to ask the universe. When she wrote, can planets exist in a binary star system? Nicole, that's a really cool question. It turns out that a planet in a binary system can orbit either one of the two stars very closely, or it can orbit both of them from very far away. 
but it can't orbit among them. It can't do a figure eight among them, for example. That trajectory is unstable, and the planet would quickly get ejected. We may be on the verge of discovering an Earth-sized planet around one of the two stars in the Alpha Centauri system, the Sun's nearest neighbor. It would be a more compelling reason than ever before to explore the exotic science of high-speed space voyages and the time travel that goes with them. Alpha Centauri is very exciting because it now appears from a variety of different computer simulations that it's quite possible that there could be terrestrial mass planets orbiting both components of the Alpha Centauri binary system. Alpha Centauri A and B are so distant they look like a single star from Earth. But they're actually a binary pair. A third member of the system is Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf loosely bound to the main pair. If you're sitting on a planet in the Alpha Centauri A system or the Alpha Centauri B system, Proxima Centauri wouldn't even be visible in your night sky. It's that dim. Alpha Centauri A and B orbit around each other. At their closest point, they're about 20% farther than the distance from the Sun to Saturn. At their farthest, they're 20% more distant than the Sun is from Neptune. Each has a habitable zone similar to the Sun, where life-bearing planets could exist. And that, after all, is a holy grail in astronomy. Well, a trip to the nearest stars, for example, Alpha Centauri, that we can do within our lifetimes would be immensely exciting. One of the great goals of science is to find life elsewhere in the universe. What better place to start, other than our solar system, than the nearest star? But now, space travel becomes time travel as we set our sights on a mission that can be done under the laws of physics we know now. A mission that can cross more than four light years of space in just 45 days. Our quest to unravel the mysteries of time now point us again to Alpha Centauri, the sun's closest neighbor. It is the most likely first destination for a starship from Earth. A starship whose mission cannot avoid a component of time travel. We have no idea what kind of technology would actually take us from here to Alpha Centauri and back. Therefore, we might as well be optimistic and say that we just move at 99.99% the speed of light all the way there and then all the way back. The ship seems surprisingly small for one that has to make such a long trip. How can it hold enough supplies to support a crew for the duration? It can because it is not only a starship, it is also a time machine. It would take about 8.6 years because Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. But to the people on the ship, it would take less than two months. It would take about 45 days because they're traveling close to the speed of light. The astronauts would also have to overcome the problem of killer acceleration in quickly reaching the speed of light. Otherwise, they'd have to speed up slowly, adding time to the total trip. Alpha Centauri is the go-to destination for Earth-bound beings hoping for a toehold in star travel. It's no accident that James Cameron chose it as home to his fictional moon Pandora in the movie Avatar. The reason we would go to Alpha Centauri has to do with today's intensive telescope search for Earth-like planets around Alpha Centauri B, one of two stars in the system's main binary pair. Alpha Centauri B, it turns out, is by far the best star in the entire sky. Uh, for searching for low-mass, Earth-like planets. Uh, but to carry out that kind of search requires a very dedicated effort. It's not something that you can accomplish in a few nights at a telescope. 
It's hard enough to separate the two main stars of Alpha Centauri in a space photograph. Trying to see an Earth-sized planet around one of them is, at the moment, impossible. The best shot we have is to find the planet by the wobble method. Detecting a star's subtle back-and-forth motion caused by the tiny gravitational tug any planet would have on it. Like time travel, it seems almost undoable. The back-and-forth wobble that we need to detect is incredibly small. I'm here at the Rose Bowl, and if the Rose Bowl were the size of Alpha Centauri, then the amount of wobble that we need to detect is about this much, about 3.3 inches. And we need to detect that from 4.3 million miles away. Alpha Centauri B is slightly smaller than A, and the planet hunt is concentrated there, mostly because a smaller star will show more wobble and detection will be that much easier. In three to five years, we should have an answer. I think that if we were to discover that there's an Earth-mass planet orbiting the very nearest star, then there would be a great deal of excitement to somehow either build a large telescope to try to observe that planet, or perhaps in the far future, to design a mission that could actually go there. With the goal of our time travel quest identified, we can imagine our spacecraft in Earth orbit about to leave on the first mission to Alpha Centauri. The ship's high speed propels it into time machine mode, slowing its clock so its passengers approach Alpha Centauri in three to four weeks. Seeing things up close, no human has ever seen before. First up, a stellar flare from the red dwarf Proxima Centauri. On the outskirts of the triple system, it is the closest of the three to the sun. Proxima Centauri is prone to these sudden outbursts that can cause it to brighten up by a factor of four or five over the course of just a day and then fade back just as quickly. So you might be in for some real fireworks as you pass by Proxima Centauri. As we come within the triple star system, we might imagine swinging past Alpha Centauri A and using gravity assist to send us in the direction of Alpha Centauri B. The sister Earth at the ship's destination is the ultimate goal, and the travelers will be anxious to explore it and search for life. Although the trip has taken little more than a few months for the travelers, the high speed will slow down their clocks so much that when they return, nearly a decade will have passed on Earth. The realization of star travel at high speed is a dream for the far future. On an Earth where technology is so advanced and changing so fast, the difference of eight or 10 years could be dramatic. This kind of time travel may become routine to a new generation of star travelers. Taking mankind on the next giant leap in its epic journey through the universe.